What's going on YouTube? So today we're checking out Blink's new outdoor security camera. This is the one camera system. I purchased it for $99. I'll leave a link in the description below. They do sell a two camera, three camera, and I think five camera, maybe two, maybe they have a four camera system too. I'll put them all down in the description below so you can check them out yourself and the current pricing itself. This comes with their two year battery life, uh, just like their their XT2 model that I uh, actually reviewed as well. I will put that review up here, uh, up here or up here. So you can check that out as well. I will uh, review these, this one compared to that one a little bit based on quality to see if the quality actually went up on the new ones. They didn't name these XT2 or I'm sorry, XT3 or anything like that. They just said all new Blink outdoor security camera. They also have an indoor camera just like this as well. That's not weatherproof, but they just named them all new. Now I do know that Amazon purchased Blink uh, within the last year or two. So I think that's probably why they, they're probably gonna go with a new naming system maybe. I'm not 100% sure why they changed it to the all new Blink outdoor camera. This is weather resistant, day and night HD video. It does have two way audio, which was added in the X-T2 model, motion detection and works with Amazon Alexa. Now I know one of the biggest changes here too, from X-T2 to this model is the local storage that you're gonna get. Uh, the other X-T2 model goes with cloud storage. This one does have cloud storage and local storage. I believe you will have to pay for, yeah, uh, subscription sold separately for the actual cloud storage plan. You don't have to pay for the storage plan if you get a local storage. Uh, I believe it's a thumb drive you have to use, a USB thumb drive that you have to use. And I recommend doing that. Unless you want everything saved to the cloud itself, you should still be able to access this stuff via your phone outside your house, just like you would the cloud storage. Uh, just if someone stole this with your uh, thumb drive or just stole your thumb drive, you wouldn't have this backed up. So on the back, it says protect what matters inside and out. And I think the reason why they're doing this is because they have the same camera, well, similar camera design for the indoor camera system they have, as well as the outdoor. They do have their Blink Mini camera as well, which is 35 bucks, a lot cheaper, but it has to be plugged in. The indoor camera that they have that looks like this is also uh, battery operated. So let's go ahead and check and see what you get in the box. So at the very top, you have the quick start guide and it gives you a QR code to scan. So you have the Sync 2 or Sync Module 2 for the Blink and they changed it. Now it's got the white uh, border here and you got a light, an LED light for the Wi-Fi connection and the power connection. So this base actually is powered or is powered by uh, USB, but is also powered to your network via Wi-Fi. So you don't actually have to plug this base into the network using an ethernet cable. You can actually use Wi-Fi. Um, actually you have to use Wi-Fi and, and it's the same as Blink X-T2 and I think the previous Blink 1. Now you do have the USB port here, like I said, for your thumb drive for internal data as well as a reset pen here. And then you have the actual USB or micro USB for power. So they give you a USB-A power brick for the power of the actual module itself. They provide you the USB-A to micro USB for the power on the actual module itself too. And down here, here is another, looks like just more product information, help guide. You get two screws and I think this is for the mount for the actual camera itself. And then you have the actual camera itself. This, like I said, it's very small, um, very small camera fits in the palm of my hand and it's, it'll be easy to hang and it's really light on the back. You have the actual speaker itself here. Well, I think that's either a speaker or the microphone. And there's also what we think is a speaker or a microphone. I think that's probably the speaker and the microphone might be on the back or vice versa. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that the speaker's on the front or I mean, I'm sorry, let's back up. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that the microphone's on the front and then the speaker's on the back. That way it's picking up what you're saying or what, what's going on in front of the camera. Then you have, uh, looks like LED lights here so that they can turn on via motion or turn on, show you that there's motion going on, the camera itself. And then you have the PIR sensor, the motion sensor, big one right there. This is very shiny, which is kind of different. Uh, it'll pick up every fingerprint. If it gets rained on, it'll probably show up a little spotty like your window. This on the outside here is kind of, it's like a semi-gloss. It won't show up fingerprints like the front will. Probably should have done the front like that. The back is the same, same way. And then you have the actual unlock. So you unlock this left or right, 
left or counterclockwise to unlock it, clockwise to lock it, and the two batteries, which actually they provide you, will go in there. And there are two double A's. They're lith these are lithium ion batteries. And then you got the plug here, the waterproof port for charging the batteries if you want. So here are the two batteries they give you. They're Energizer Ultimate Lithium. They're double A's, and I'm, believe, I'm sure they are rechargeable. And I'm assuming that these are pretty good as far as uh, longevity and how long you can actually use this device, the camera itself, without recharging. Because they do tout that two-year um, battery, life, like the length or the how long this camera should stay alive without recharging, which is a long time. I highly doubt it lasts ten, uh, two years uh, on, under normal use, but I'm going to go ahead and say it probably works fairly well for at least six to nine months. And it's interesting, they said, use the tool provided for that. I didn't get a tool. Oh, here it is. So that doesn't go in there like that. So it's actually a screw right here that unscrews completely from that. And then we put the battery in, or the batteries in. Oops. So now we're ready to go. And we can actually screw this back on. I recommend using a flat head. This is kind of a little bit convoluted. But either way, and then you actually have the mount itself here, just like the X-T2 model. And then that connects right up there via push, looks like, I think. So let's go ahead and get this set up. As you can see, I already got the fingerprints on here. It's ready to be set up now. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. So let's go and get this set up. I wanna show you the app itself and I wanna show you the quality of the video. Um, nighttime vision or the night vision and the daytime as well as the two-way audio. So basically it doesn't want you to actually point it point blank to the street area where people are gonna walk by and it's gonna catch every vehicle driving by. And also it says visitors approaching directly toward the camera, side to side movement is more easily detected than forward to back. Meaning if it's straight on to your like walkway or doorway, it's gonna have a tough time finding those people motion wise if they walk straight up to the camera versus from off the camera to on the camera. So you need to keep that in mind when you actually place this. And that's pretty par with, with uh, most of your security cameras for motion detection. So let's go ahead and get it set up, or actually it's set up now. Let's go ahead and get it out there and check out the quality. And also we're gonna check the app out. So here's the daytime footage. So here's the daytime footage quality. This is actually set on normal quality. Not best and not battery saver. So this is what you're gonna get on a normal daytime footage and the audio quality. So now I have it on the best quality. So this is the quality you're gonna get on the best. And it does say that police require three point or three megabits per um, Also, this is gonna reduce your battery life uh, significantly. Not sure how bad, but it's gonna definitely reduce it. So right now I actually have the camera right here. I just put it up here. And so I'm at the back side of my yard here. And my house is about a hundred feet about 75 feet away, but the module itself is inside the house, in the middle of the house. So you're probably looking at about 100, maybe a little bit over 100 feet. And the camera footage you're about to see is this being used on best quality right here, from the, about 100 feet from the module. So I did have a question about how far away this camera can be from the actual module itself. And right now, I'm about 100 feet away from the module itself on the back side of my yard. And it's working pretty good. This is on best quality. So here's the quality of night vision. Uh, it's black outside, and the audio quality is black. It's really different than uh, what you heard before. But this is on the regular level uh, quality of the video. Here's the night vision quality on the best mode, or the best quality mode. And this is the one that's probably going to kill the battery quicker. Uh, so this is the actual quality that you're going to see on best quality mode. All right, so here is the app itself. And so I only have one camera set up right now. So you have the sync module right here. You have the actual camera right here, the one that it's actually set up. 
And so right now it's just a still image of what was last seen. Well, actually that's not what was last seen. I'm not sure why that one's still there, but either way. So we can go ahead and click on the camera itself and it'll live view what's going on right now. I put this in the front of my house and it's nighttime right now. So I can actually see what's going on. If something happens right now that I want to save, I can click save here and it'll save the video. Right now you're actually seeing a vehicle come up uh, on the, not the driveway, but on the street. So let's watch it go by here. There you go. And then also down here, we can hold this to talk if you wanted to and talk to the person. So right now it's telling me there's one video ready to go. And these are my, these are the videos that I did for quality. Um, so you can, you'll actually see these, you actually probably should already see this in the actual review right now. So I did all the quality on standard and best. So up here is all the different information about the camera itself. So one thing I dislike about what this camera system does, one thing I dislike is the monitoring of the battery. So it says, okay, it doesn't give me a percentage. It doesn't give me anything other than okay. I'm not sure what the next one is where it says need charge. Maybe I guess, I don't know. I don't get any percentage. I can't do anything with it. So I really, I don't know. Um, what's, I wish Amazon or blink the blink team would change that to a percentage. It does tell me the temperature outside right now. So I can click on that and I can set up alerts uh, if I wanted to. So that way you can do a, an alert when it gets a certain temperature above or low. And I don't know why I did that. And then there's quite a few different uh, settings we can do here. Well, for one, and we enabled uh, motion detection. Right now, zones are beta, uh, in beta right now, but we can still enable zones. Retrigger time, meaning how many seconds between retrigger. So that way, if I walk out there and it detects my motion, at what time does it reset and look for motion again? Sensitivity, so you got low to high. Clip length, and I did 60 seconds, and then did end clip early if the motion stops. So that way I can at least make sure I get all the motion going on. Early notification, which is a beta function too as well. And I think it just pre-records real quick. Uh, motion recording, which actually is set on, which is weird because motion detection is enabled. Maybe motion detection for the alert, and then we have it set to record, that's probably what it is. And then we have night vision on auto at medium intensity or the infrared intensity. And then enable microphone left and right, or actually, I'm sorry, speaker volume. So we have that enabled. And then also down here is the quality. And so you can go from saver standard to best. Right now it's on standard. Obviously standard is gonna be standard, uh, like the normal range that they want you to have it at. Saver is if you have a lot of alerts, I would put it on that. And best is gonna get you the best quality on video. And then they have status LED. So remember the LEDs I was talking about on the actual camera itself? it will show up at blue. There's a blue LED on there when it's recording. So you can turn that off right here. And then also it shows when the last update was, what firmware you're on, as well as um, camera connected to Wi-Fi and the sync module connected to Wi-Fi. So other than that, like right now we're disarmed. All we need to do is go click on armed. And if I click on armed, that means it arms the motion detection. So right now, if I walk by the camera, nothing will happen. And I can still live view it, but nothing will actually happen. If I click armed and I walk by it, it will trigger, send me a notification on my phone and say motion detected and then start recording as well. So there you have it with the all new Blink Outdoor camera. Um, there is some updates on it. It seems like a lot of it's pretty much the same as the X-T2 model. And one thing I really, really like about the new update on this is the video quality. If you haven't seen my video review on the X-T2, like I said, I'll link it down in the description below and I'll put it up here so you can check it out yourself. But the quality of the video that it records on this one versus the X-T2, this one kills it out of the water. Now, I will say on the X-T2, I only did uh, sample footage of the standard. On this one, I decided to change that up and do standard as well as um, best because I do know that people did complain on my other video that like this is look this quality looks like crap um, 
and it does have the capability to get a better quality. So, and I didn't want to like, I didn't want to mess that up on this one. I didn't want to show that it was on standard only. And I, I just wanted to make sure that we got the best quality out there for this camera. So that way you can see what it can actually, it is capable of recording. Like I said, on best, what's going to happen is it's going to kill your battery quicker, but that's up to you. They give you those options to, to use, use them at whatever you want to use them at. And that, that choice is yours. If you have any questions, comments, or opinions about this, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If this is your first time, please consider subscribing, and I will see you next time.